Roll A, take A. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of the Newsfeed. I'm Meg Newhard. And I'm Molly Bryant. During the 2018 Virginia Tech Black Alumni Reunion, University President Tim Sands announced the founding of the new Ujima Living Learning Community. Ujima will be Virginia Tech's 15th li living learning community. The living learning community will focus on understanding the unique experiences of African Americans in society, including their experiences in higher education. The community will be housed in Pedro Yates Hall. Pedro Yates honors Irving Pedro III, the first black student to enroll at Virginia Tech, and Charlie Yates, the first black graduate of the university. Students in Udemo will learn skills from black organizations like the Student African American Brotherhood and Student African American Sisterhood, also known as SAS. SAS member Nabil Burren talks about what the community will mean to students. I think that the new LLC is definitely a step in the right direction. Um, I feel like for African American students, a lot of the problem is articulating their experience here. And I think that will definitely help them, you know, kind of form a bridge between African American students here and um, the rest of the Virginia Tech community. Ujima will be designed for around 70 students. Ujima co creator Tommy Amal says the project has been under development for about a year. The Living Learning Community is set to open in the fall of 2018. In addition to Virginia Tech alterations, college is a time of growth and transition for the individual throughout their time on campus. The campus itself tends to change as well, and that can be met with criticism. We take a look at Virginia Tech's campus to see what has changed in the past four years, but also what endures. Newsfeed reporter Jesse Dix has more on that story. Four years doesn't seem like a long time, but many things can change in that time frame. College campuses aren't immune to that change as they are constantly trying to grow. Virginia Tech is no exception. Older buildings on campus have been renovated or taken down and new ones have been put in their place. An all-new turf intramural field complex was constructed. Also, for the first time since 2006, a new logo for Virginia Tech was created. Virginia Tech professor Buddy Howe knows the frustrations that come along with the change, but calls them good growing pains for the university. Probably what most people would call growing pains. If you're going to grow, you've got to have noise and building shaking when they're tearing down old dorms and uh, putting up new dorms and pathways that you have to walk you know walk through this building and go around this way to get to a building in 2017 virginia tech unveiled their proposed master plan for the university which shows more change could be on the way in blacksburg the plan aims to improve student life and could shift the center of campus from the drill field to the duck pond with the proposed expansion although the campus is constantly changing and growing Senior Michael Boyceva thinks the welcoming environment will always remain a part of Virginia Tech. I think just everybody here at Virginia Tech is so just um, open and welcoming just in the community, so I think that's one thing that will always stay true to Virginia Tech. For the news feed, I'm Jesse Dix reporting. Moving down 460, Christiansburg is seeing a change of their own. The Starlight Drive-In has been a staple for Christiansburg residents since the 1950s and is often remembered for a unique cinematic experience. Unfortunately for Starlight, a new noise ordinance proposal may drive business out instead of in. Newsfeed reporter Ali DeAngelis has more on this story. The Starlight Drive-In has been a prized possession for the Beasley family since 1953. Since 2016, however, the Christiansburg Town Council has received 17 noise complaints for this outdoor theater and have been working to pass a new noise ordinance ever since. This ordinance will limit business volumes to 57 decibels at night and will be a dramatic change for summer business. When the movie starts later because the days are longer, it'll be dark at about 9.15. So the first movie will start at 9.15. So it's going to run over the 10 o'clock. I asked them to change it to midnight, and they wouldn't do it. One popular argument for the drive-in has been that residential communities moved in long after it was constructed, but Mayor Barber believes that Beasley's newly installed audio system was a game changer. If enacted, police officers will purchase decibel meters to monitor noise from the origin of complaint. We don't ride through the Starlight Drive-In every night checking it. 
If we get a complaint, then if we react to it and respond to it, then we measure the level of decibels at the person's house. The goal is to keep community residents happy and protect the town from unnecessary hearing loss. I'm here for opening day at the Starlight Drive-In in Christiansburg, Virginia. What you see behind us are the audio speakers that have been causing a lot of noise in town council recently. Make sure to tune in and pay attention to the vote on April 24th in town council to see if this new noise ordinance will be passed and affect the audio volumes of the drive-in. This is Allie DeAngelis reporting from the news feed. Back to you at the news desk. The end of the semester is coming up and finals loom over the heads of Virginia Tech students. Around this time of year, stress levels run high across campus. Virginia Tech classes end on Wednesday, May 2nd this semester, which means final exams as well as project and por portfolio deadlines are fast approaching. As the semester draws to a close, fe students feel their stress mounting in anticipation of finals week. To get students through this hectic time, Hokey Wellness and the Cook Counseling Center are two tech services that offer programs and events to help students combat their anxieties. Finals Extravaganza is the main event to do so. It's for students to distress and also to learn healthy ways <coughs> of coping with stress. So during this event, the counseling center and the other participating units, uh, they have fun activities for students to do. Before the big event, students can also de-stress by talking to someone at Cook Counseling Center. Students can find both the Counseling Center and Hokey Wellness at McComas Hall. As if the last few weeks of school are not stressful enough, it's springtime, which means the season for runny noses, itchy eyes, and loud coughs is upon us. Reporty, reporter Andy Brandon has more on allergy season. While there's no exact science to knowing which season may be the worst for those with allergies, spring tends to be the consensus worst across the board. The simple reason for that is during the springtime, plants are pollinating, which renders a high volume of pollen in the atmosphere. I spoke to Blacksburg resident Tad Mosier about this year's pollen. I usually don't have that bad of allergies, like this year in particular it's been kind of bad with uh, all the pollen in the air from all the plants being pollinated and stuff being spring. Usually get a little bit worse around this time, but this year has been a little bit worse than years I can remember. But what about pollen causes allergy symptoms? Well, when the human body interacts with the process of fertilization, the immune system takes the incoming pollen as a threat and fights back, rendering allergy symptoms. Virginia Tech student Josh Carrington describes some of his allergy symptoms this spring. Definitely had a runny nose. My eyes have been itching a little bit. Um, they water sometimes. Um, I've had a slight cough, but other than that, nothing much. If you know you have allergies, the best way to stay ahead of them is to take over-the-counters such as Mucinex, Afrin, or Zyrtec. This has been Andy Brannon reporting for the news feed. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to the news feed. I'm Meg Newhard. And I'm Molly Bryant. Virginia Tech celebrates Earth Day through a full week of events called Earth Week to promote sustainability. But how can individuals be more Earth friendly throughout the year? News feed reporter Kelly Clarkson tells us how. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated worldwide on April 22nd. Various events are held on this day, both locally and nationally, to promote the protection of nature and the environment. Virginia Tech celebrates Earth Day through an Earth Week of events promoting environmental sustainability leading up to Earth Day. 
to me, Earth Week is really just a chance for everybody, every student to get involved in sustainability and to find a way that they relate to a certain sustainability issue. The Environmental Coalition Club and Office of Sustainability at Virginia Tech had information booths, speakers, workshops, sustainable dining meals, farmer's market appearance, hammock hangouts, and other promotional events throughout the week. Virginia Tech Environmental Coalition President tells us easy tips on how to promote environmental sustainability not only through Earth Week but also throughout every day of the year. People can be just more conscious of the way that they live. Um, like there are easy tricks, you know, turn off the lights, use a reusable water bottle, um, eat less meat, shop locally. Shopping at the local farmer's market, recycling and planting flowers and plants are other ways to protect our planet and promote sustainability. This has been Callie Carson reporting for the Newsfeed. As Earth Week wraps up, many different events and initiatives have taken place in the area. Newsfeed reporter Caroline Fear has more on the irony of one event in particular. Caroline? Thanks, Meg. From panel discussions to yoga classes, it's clear that taking care of the environment is valued by many Blacksburg residents. One of the many events from Earth Week was an Arbor Day tree planting where just steps from the site, a shredathon ironically was also taking place. A variety of volunteers ventured out early in the morning to take part in the tree planting to help reach the goal of planting 75 trees. The planting took place at the Blacksburg Tree Nursery just off of Patrick Henry Drive. Ironically enough, at the same time, the shredathon was taking place in the nearby parking lot. Many documents were dropped off to be shredded, signifying the end of life for the trees used to create the documents. Operations Specialist Karen Day facilitated the shredding and mentions how this is an event that symbolizes recycling the trees after they have been turned into paper. So we're trying to show how you plant a tree and some trees, of course, are cut down and used for paper. You use the paper and instead of throwing it out, it can be shredded. Lines were consistent throughout the day for the Shredathon, and the town of Blacksburg wanted to host a Shredathon after tax season, assuming many would want to shred their confidential tax papers. The tree planting was also able to reach its goal of planting 75 trees in the nursery, and once the trees become of age, they will be dispersed into the Blacksburg community where they will continue to grow. According to Day, events like these make people more aware of getting involved while being able to help the environment. Reporting for the news feed, I'm Caroline Fear. Now back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Caroline. In other news, the idea of working out at the gym can feel intimidating to people who aren't confident with navigating the equipment. For this reason, and many others, Blacksburg has a thriving group exercise program with instructors who plan their workouts in advance. Newsfeed reporter Katie Rice tells us about a unique group fitness experience recently introduced at Virginia Tech. Les Mills is a company in New Zealand that creates fun and effective workouts for the general public. Some popular formats worldwide are Body Pump, Body Combat, CX Works, and Sprint. The launch week is when we are teaching new music, so it's really exciting because usually we team teach it, so there's two people, which adds an added element of um, excitement just because you have two personalities in the chemistry and interacting but the other thing is it's the best of the best of what Les Mills is putting out and so it's exciting just because it's a better workout than the last one because it's probably challenging and the music is always great. Every three months Les Mills releases new choreography for all of their class formats. Licensed gyms like Virginia Tech and the Weight Club in Blacksburg host a launch week to introduce the new songs and workouts. I guess if you've never taken a fitness class before, you think it's not for you, go give it a try. It never hurts. Um, and it always gets easier every time. Like every time you take it, it gets a little bit easier. You get to push yourself a little bit further and it can be really rewarding if you let it be. The Weight Club's launch week began Saturday, April 21st. The launch week at Virginia Tech started Monday, April 16th and ended April 21st. This is Katie Rice reporting for the News Feed. That will wrap up this edition of the News Feed. If you have a story idea for the News Feed, let us know. Send us an email at thenewsfeednrv at gmail.com. And as always, you can also connect with the News Feed on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Molly Bryant. And I'm Meg Newhart.